In Australia, we have the internet being rolled out all across the country and it's known as the NBN, AKA the National Broadband Network. And now I recently just switched over from my ADSL 2 Plus connection, which was very slow by the way. The speeds I was getting was about 10 megabits per second down and one megabit per second up. And I know, right, try doing a YouTube channel on one megabit per second. That's what I've been doing for the last year. It's been brutally rough to get videos up. I usually just uploaded overnight, went to bed and then woke up and the video was finished. And I had to actually drop the quality of my videos to account for that. Now we fast forward to February, 2018. I have now been connected, but my speeds are only 14 megabits per second up and 40 megabits per second down, which compared to the rest of the world is actually quite bad, especially for a first world country in 2018. So what is going wrong with the MBN? Well, today I'm gonna to explain four major factors that could be affecting your connection with the MBN, as well as detailing this new modem that was sent in via D-Link, which we're gonna take a quick look as well. So let's get on with it. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian and the first reason why your internet could be slow, especially if you've just hooked up to the MBN, is a thing known as FTTN, fiber to the node, which originally when the MBN was planned, they were gonna roll out fiber to the premises. That's where they have the node, which is usually about anywhere from 100 to two kilometers away from your house. They'll run from that node, then fiber to your house. And that'll essentially mean that the big internet hub in your city, you'll be connected to that via fiber the whole way. However, in this case, the government decided to save money. So they rolled it out to the node from the major hub in your city. And then from the node, they rolled out, well, they actually used the existing copper lines. And then from there, you got internet. So if those copper lines are really old, then your speed could be degraded, even if you live quite close to this node. However, another thing is, if you live quite far from the node, you will get attenuation and that will affect your speeds. In my case, I live about 800 meters away from the node. And so I originally planned to get on a 100 megabits per second download speed and 40 megabits per second upload speed. However, those plans have been changed as in my case, it's actually the distance which is affecting my internet speeds. Hence, I'm only getting 40 megabits per second down and about 13 megabits per second upload speeds. However, with that, I can change now my internet plan, which I originally planned for 100 down and 40 up. I can drop that down to 50 down and 20 up and save myself some money every month and not have to worry about changing speeds because I'm theoretically capped by the copper line running to that node. Now there are some other existing acronyms out there for technologies as HFC, which is hybrid fiber coaxial cable. This is Telstra's existing optic lines and they are actually quite fast. You'll generally find that they're a lot better than FTTN in your area. There's also FTTB, which is fiber to the basement if you live in an apartment block. And of course there's FTTP, fiber to the premises and fixed wireless in the area where the distance is just too far to lay any fiber out in the ground. This is usually in remote areas. So that's the first reason you could be experiencing problems. If you live too far away from the node or if the actual copper from the node is so bad to the point where your internet speeds get affected. Now the problem is here as well is it's not really fair for the average Australian guy. Someone who really needs the internet could live far away from the node like myself and get affected but then someone who lives really close to the node might not even want to use the internet at all. And yet they get much better speeds than I do. So you can see why now Australians are complaining even just after the first reason. But let's move into the second reason why the MBN speeds could be slow in your area. And that is data provisioning from your internet service providers. So basically your internet service provider will contract with the MBN and get allocated a certain amount of bandwidth. Now, of course, some networks are known for pricing really cheap competitive rates and then over provisioning what the bandwidth they purchased from the MBN. In this case, you could get throttled and it is known that some internet service providers do overload the network and do throttle their users. And in that case, you might wanna change network providers, especially if you can get into your modem settings and configure your username and password and you've got a friend on a different network, you may wish to try out their username and password just quickly to do a speed test and see if your speeds are different. If they're a lot better on your friend's network, then you may wish to think about changing your network. 
In my case, however, the internet speeds don't change throughout the day. And the beauty of this modem is it actually tells me the maximum download and upload rates achievable. So I have nothing to worry about with my current internet service provider. So that could be the second reason. Let's move on now to the third reason. So now here lies the weirdest of the problems in number three. Since FTTN and FTTB use existing copper lines, Telstra, I believe, which owns a lot of the copper lines, do give uh, clients one year to change over from their existing landline telephones and also ADSL 2 Plus to the MBN network. However, within that one year, if someone using the existing telephone line complains of high pitched noises running through while they're trying to talk to someone, then Telstra are obligated by law to then go to that node and throttle it so the high pitched whining noises will go away. So in this case, you may notice that your internet speeds are really good and then the next month, they're just terrible. Uh, and this is the case, it's just a matter of luck. You just got really unlucky, so you'll have to wait it out until that year's over and then they can up the speeds again. So that is probably the most unluckiest of the problems I've mentioned here today. And there's really nothing you can do about it because it's Australian law. However, if you do notice your speeds dropping out, you can within the modem itself, and this is gonna sort of be number problem number four, uh, sometimes the networks do get throttled and your modem has a setting called SRA or seamless rate adaption. And now this is sort of tying in with this problem, but also the uh, sometimes the networks will get throttled from being over provisioned. And so you can turn on a setting called SRA and it will adapt automatically to the slower rates, hence not dropping out your internet, especially if you're watching Netflix or you're doing something really important. It could be a business conference call. And so this setting is actually crucial if you don't want your internet dropping out, but you know your network is prone to being throttled either by the ISPs or if it's being throttled suddenly by an unknown thing like Telstra capping the solution for you. Anyway, the great news is all that aside, I am grateful for having a better internet connection than I had before. I now have 13 times better upload speeds than I previously had. So uploading videos is now a lot better. And also this modem here sent in by D-Link is the DSL 5300. It has eight bands or eight antennas, which are high gain antennas. So they do give out a pretty strong signal. There's also three bands for the wireless. Two are five gigahertz, one is 2.4 gigahertz. The 2.4 gigahertz generally has a bit more reach than the five gigahertz signals. However, the five gigahertz signals allow you to carry 2,167 megabits per second, as opposed to the 2.4, which maximum speeds are theoretically 1,000 megabits per second. Now, all three of these bands can be used simultaneously, hence why they advertise the speeds as I think 5,337, hence the uh, 5,300 in the name of the modem. However, theoretically for a single device with a single uh, wireless uh, connection on it, you really can only expect maximum 2,167 megabits per second, unless you've got some crazy technology that bridges three wireless ports together. In that case, you'd probably just wanna spend the money and get a faster wireless device itself. But also on the note of wireless, some people complain about D-Link modems having cheap components and the internet dropping out on the wireless. I did experience this problem myself. However, I don't believe it was the hardware inside, at least, this specific model. Uh, what I found was when I went to the advanced settings in the wireless, I had to turn off roaming assistant. Once I turned this off, my wireless connection was absolutely fine and didn't drop out at all. So I actually don't know why that setting is enabled by default. I would like to see D-Link fix this uh, because in my experience, everyone on this house in this house uh, was complaining to me and saying the wireless was dropping out and the Telstra modem we had before was not dropping out. Please fix this. So I did, did a little bit of trial and error and I found out it was this uh, exact setting that was causing the problem. However, on the note of the wireless signal itself, it's a very strong signal coming in with a better signal than my previous ADSL 2 plus Telstra wireless modem. Uh, however, it should since this uh, retails for around 750 Australian dollars. So that's a lot for a modem and a router solution all in one. However, you can pick it up off eBay for around about 650 Australian dollars currently. And the good news is, is that it does have uh, extra features like the QoS or quality of service scheduling. However, I will complain a little bit about the QoS service. It's mainly a simplistic service. It doesn't give you any advanced options 
like specific speed throttling on devices, which I would like to see in a future firmware update or future reiteration of this modem, especially the firmware update. Uh, at the moment, you can only uh, have three different priority levels where, for instance, I can put my computer on high priority so that gets allocated most of the bandwidth and I can put everyone else on the medium setting. <laughs> Not that I would do that, uh, but this modem allows you to only do that with the QoS. However, there are a lot of advanced features as well with this modem. So you can fine tune this modem with a lot of the advanced settings. However, me personally, I'm happy with the speeds this thing is delivering. And of course, the build quality itself is quite good. And also before I get on out of here, this modem features a USB 2 port for a printer if you want to attach a printer to it and then share that around the whole network and also a USB device for a USB attached storage, which can then be again accessed throughout the whole network. So I was pretty impressed with this modem. However, it is quite expensive for what it is, though I have heard that a lot of other people are doing some advanced testing with it and they say that it will extract the best speeds possible on the MBN. So if you guys are in an area where you can get really good speeds from the MBN, then this might be the modem for you. Just be, keep in mind that it will be quite expensive, especially for what it is, though it is a really nice modem and it does have really nice hardware built in. For instance, like the quad core Cortex CPU and also the ability to isolate your network with a guest network as well. So if you run a hotel business and you've got your own private living quarters at the hotel, then you can separate the guest network from your own private network too. So nice little modem, great touches, and also the MBN. Hope you guys enjoyed the explanation on what Australian internet is like, what some of the problems you could be facing if you've got poor speeds at the moment and you're on the MBN. And with that guys, if you enjoyed the video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below, are you on the MBN or what internet speeds are you getting in your country? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.